This is part 64 of AngularCRAD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how the client communicates with the server in an Angular application. Along the way, we'll understand the typical architecture of an Angular application. Finally, we'll discuss the difference between HTTP POST, PUT and PATCH verbs and when to use one over the other. First, let's understand how the client communicates with the server. When a browser issues a request, a route in our Angular application responds to that request. For example, if we take a look at the Angular application that we've been working with, notice this path right here, employees for slash colon id. So in the browser, if the URL is employees for slash one, one is the id of the employee, then this route is activated. There is usually a component associated with every route, but this route, it is employee details component. So this component is instantiated and its code is executed. Now this component needs employee data. When a component needs data, it usually calls an Angular service. So if we take a look at this employee details component, notice we are calling employee service. This is our Angular service and this service gets employee details by ID. The data access logic is usually encapsulated in an Angular service. If you're wondering, why can't we include the data access logic in the component itself rather than an Angular service? Well, that's because if the data access logic is encapsulated in a service, then the service can be reused across all the components that needs that data access logic. Without the service, we would have to repeat that data access code in each component that needs it. Imagine the overhead in terms of time and effort required to develop, debug, test and maintain that duplicated code across multiple places instead of having it in one central place like a service and reusing that service where required. So, when a web browser issues a request, a route usually responds to that request. With a route, there is a component associated and if the component needs data, it calls an Angular service. Now, the data the Angular service needs is not on the client side. It's in a database on the server side. So the Angular service calls a server side restful service. Angular uses HTTP to communicate with the server side restful service. With each HTTP request that is sent to the server, one of these HTTP verbs is also sent. So these verbs that is sent with each request to the server specifies what we want to do with the resource on the server. We'll discuss the purpose of each of these HTTP verbs, the difference between them and when to use one over the other in just a bit. Now this RESTful service on the server side calls into the database server, retrieves the data and this service provides that data to the Angular service on the client side. The Angular service in turn provides that data to the component and the component displays the data in the web browser. Now let's understand each of these HTTP verbs. The first one is get. As the name implies, we use get to get data from the server. Next, we have post. We use post to post data to the server, that is to create a new item on the server. And then we have put. We usually use put to update data. Now let's understand the difference between post and put. Post creates a new item. Put, on the other hand, updates the item with the given ID if the item already exists. If the item does not exist, then it creates a new item with that given ID. Another difference is post is not item potent, whereas put is item potent. So the obvious question that comes to our mind is what does item potent mean? Well, since put is item potent, no matter how many times you call it, you would have the same effect. For example, when you use put with a specific ID and if a resource with that ID does not exist, put creates it. Now, if you issue the same put request again with that same ID, another item with that same ID will not be created. Instead, that existing item will be updated. So it would not matter how many times you call put, it would have the same effect. So that's why put is item potent. Remember, we use POST to create a new item. So when you call POST multiple times, multiple items will be created. So for example, if you have an employee object and when you post that same employee object 10 times, 
10 objects will be created on the server. So post is not item potent. Now let's discuss patch. Just like put, patch is also used to update a resource on the server. But there are a couple of differences between put and patch. So let's discuss those differences now. Put is usually used to replace an existing resource entirely. That is to update all the properties of a resource. Patch on the other hand is used to perform a partial update. That is update only a subset of the properties of the resource. Now we already know put updates the item with a given ID if the item already exists or creates a new item with a given ID if the item does not exist. On the other hand, an item can only be patched if it exists. We cannot patch an item that does not exist. Now we already discussed Angular uses the HTTP protocol to communicate with the service on the server side. Now depending on the version of Angular that you're using in your application, you have two choices. You can either use HTTP client service or the HTTP service. If your Angular version is 4.3 or later, then you can use the new HTTP client service. If your version is less than 4.3, then your only choice is to use the old HTTP service. We discussed using the HTTP service to communicate with the server side service in parts 27 and 28 of Angular 2 tutorial. Now in this Angular CRUD application that we have been working with so far in this video series, we are using Angular version 5. So we are going to use this new HTTP client service for all of our server side communication. Another important point to keep in mind is this old HTTP service is deprecated since Angular version 4.3. Let's actually prove this. Now let's import both the old HTTP service and the new HTTP client service in this page not found component. First, let's import the old HTTP service. The old HTTP service is present in this Angular forward slash HTTP package. And the new HTTP client service is present in Angular forward slash common forward slash HTTP package. Now, if we go to the definition on this old HTTP service, Notice the class is right here and it is marked deprecated and the note here says to use angular common HTTP package instead. Now we don't need these two import statements and page not found components so let's delete them. So this new HTTP client service has got some great benefits over the old HTTP service. We'll discuss using the new HTTP client service and the benefits it provide in our upcoming videos in this series. Now let's quickly recap how the client communicates with the server in an Angular application. When a browser issues a request, that request is mapped to a route in the Angular application. The configured component on that route calls the client side Angular service. The Angular service calls the server side service using the HTTP protocol. The server side service calls into the database. The database provides the data to the server side service. The server side service then forwards that data to the Angular service on the client side. The Angular service provides that data to the component. The component then finally displays that data to the user in the browser. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.